Okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about some of the statistical analysis we use in the, the testing of hypothesis today. And that pause button on your DVD is just going to be wonderful because you might have to go back and take a look at some of these things. It, when we're going to talk about correlation, Kramer's V is a measure of association and probability. And it's very important that these three things be clearly separate in your mind. The first two, correlation and Kramer's V, are both measures of association and they're used with specific types of data. Let's start with correlation. One of the big things in sociology is that we work with correlational data so much, we have to remember that just because two things are correlated does not mean that one caused the other. And I think sometimes people make that false assumption. Uh, correlation does not imply causation. How's that for a nice little alliteration? Correlation does not imply causation. Correlation is measured in a variety of ways, but we're using something called Pearson's R, and it's symbolized by a little r, little r. And that r can be a positive or it can be a negative number. Its lowest measure can be minus 1.0, and it can run all the way up to a positive 1.0. Each of these is equally strong correlation. Let's talk about that just for a bit. A correlation of minus 1.0 would be as variable A goes up, what happens to variable B? It goes down perfectly, like a teeter-totter. This would be a minus 1.0 negative correlation. A positive correlation is as variable A goes up, variable B goes up at the exact same rate. So we're going to find rarely perfect ones, negative or positive. We're going to find numbers in between. We need to know how to interpret those numbers. A correlation just shows a relationship between two variables. It doesn't say one caused the other. But when you get a Pearson's R value, and your R equals these numbers, you'll know how to interpret it. This is not telling you that something is statistically significant. That's another issue. All this is telling you is how strong the relationship is. So a zero to 0.29 in Pearson's R is a weak relationship. And that goes whether it's 0 to 0.29 or 0 to minus 0 0.29. 0 0.3 to 0.59 is a moderate relationship between the two. And a 0.6 to 1.0 is a strong correlation between the two. And most sociological models find something uh, when there's a, a, a reasonable relationship, find something in this middle range of these top two ranges here. So a Pearson's R tells us how strongly correlated one thing is with another. And we'll talk about some very specific examples if you want to look at the scatter plot uh, part of the DVD a little bit later because it employs uh, the Pearson's R. Okay. Now let's switch gears here just a little bit and let's talk about Kramer's V. Pearson's R is entirely used for measures of correlation and specifically scatter plots. There's one frequent application of this. Right? But there are other types of data that we have that aren't able to use a Pearson's R. For example, we have cross tabulation data where you have a chart and you've got a series of columns and a series of rows. When you look under the uh, cross tabulation section, we'll uh, cover that more thoroughly. But for that we use a Kramer's V. And a Kramer's V is similar to an R, but it's for measures using cross-tab data only. So Kramer's V is interpreted differently than an R, and it's just something that uh, you can kind of work out. But a number for a Kramer's V can run from 0 to a 1.0. If you get a Kramer's V that's 0 to 0.09, nine hundreds, that's a weak association between the two variables. If you get a 0.1 to a 0.29, that's a moderate association between the two variables. If you get a 0.3 to a 1.0, that's a high or strong correlation or a measure of association between two variables. Okay. Now so far we've talked about Kramer's V for cross-tab data. And we've talked about Pearson's R for correlation or scatterplot type data. 
Both of these have a p-value associated with them. Notice you can't test the probability or the uh, statistical significance of either a Pearson's R or a Kramer's V by simply looking at those numbers. That just tells you whether it's a strong, moderate, or weak relationship. So what we introduce at this point is something very different that they both have. And this is what you use when you're finally testing your hypothesis. You've looked at whether the data goes in the direction you predicted, and you find out, my golly, it does. And then you're looking at probability. Well, what is probability? It's sometimes called a p-value, and it's sometimes called statistical significance. Statistical significance, they all mean the same thing. And what we're looking at here is we're trying to estimate what's the probability that the results we, we have in this study are the result of chance. And of course, we want a low probability it's the result of chance. So we're looking for a p-value of 0.05 or less. Now, once in a while, we get a p-value of 0.01 or less, and that's incredible. But both of these tell us something very significant. A p-value of 0.05 or less says that the data, if the data went in the direction you predicted and it has a p of 0.05 or less, that the probability that that data happened by chance is 5% or less. In other words, we have a 95% level of confidence in what we're looking at. If we look at a 0.01 level of le or less of a probability or p-value, that's even better. It says one time out of 100 that we find these, this data by chance. So when you look back on the hypothesis testing section, notice you do your research, you have your hypothesis, you do your research and collect your data. You then say, does the data go in the direction I predicted? If it's yes, then you look at the p-value. If the probability is greater than 0.05, what do you do? You reject the hypothesis. If it's less than 0.05, it's 0.05 or less, then you can accept the hypothesis. Thank you.